this year. Now, like I said, they're going to be demanding a tenant bill of rights. So this group believes there should be a designated advocate of tenants is someone that's going to be on their side. So people do not have to go out and hire a lawyer when something goes wrong. Y'all, it's starting to get really, really wild out there. So stay safe and welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. You know, today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now the data is in and think about this for a second. 15% of renters right now are behind on the rent, which means one out of every six renters is currently late. So not only do we have this huge tenant problem, guys, we just have a report come out that says Q3 of 2022 had the worst apartment leasing numbers for landlords in over 30 years years. So not only are tenants getting absolutely crushed with unaffordability, landlords are absolutely getting crushed by vacancies and people refusing to pay astronomic rents. Duh, right? If people can't afford to pay rent, they're not going to pay rent. It's as simple as that. And it's not like the foreclosure process. People could just go wherever they want. And I, what I believe is going to happen is a lot of families are going to start living together once again, just like back in 2007, 8, 9, and 10. A lot of families just moved in together to get through the financial hardship. And I believe that's going to also happen this time. And that is going to absolutely crush certain landlords that are poorly leveraged. So what we're going to do today, guys, is first we're going to dig into a story essentially about a landlords that are ripping off tenants. And then we're going to look at is rent going down? Is rent going up? Because a lot of people assume that because we're heading into a recession, because people can't buy right now, that rent is only going to go up but I have some news for you. I'm going to show you guys some charts about that. And I'm going to show you some charts again on an investor share, because I think this is a double-edged sword. I not only think that there's going to be an eviction crisis, there's also going to be a landlord crisis, but regardless, you guys, I'm not a financial advisor. So remember that this is my personal YouTube channel, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in all things real estate. I do own property, so chill out, haters, even though I'm renting right now, looking for my primary residence. And don't worry, I only own one property, guys, so please don't hate. I want to own a little bit of real estate. I don't want to own anything crazy, maybe two houses and I'm good. So please don't hate me. I Eventually, once we get through all of this horrible stuff, guys, I'm going to teach you guys, especially first-time homeowners, how to become successful owning just one house, maybe two houses, if you'll allow me that. But regardless, guys, we're going to start with an article that's titled, Tenants Tell Landlords They've Had enough. And this is from Rivadil Press. And this is going to go into a, you know, it's kind of a small landlord and the problems that they're giving their tenants, because I want you guys to understand that a lot of these institutional investors, they don't care about the community. They don't care about the tenants. So when you guys hear, and I've heard this a lot, especially on the YouTube space where mom and pop investors say, if I rent out a property, but I improve the community, it helps society. Y'all, that's true. If you guys find, if there's landlords that are actually improving the community, improving the property and care about the tenants, they're doing society a justice because most people, most landlords, they don't care about you, you guys. So just, just some food for thought. Okay. I'm not, I'm not some big landlord. I'm not any of that, but just some food for thought. You guys, let's get jump. Let's jump into the article right now. So let's start with this story guys. And this story, you know, I really hope it paints a picture of how bad institutional investors really can be. This is a, about a whole bunch of tenants that are trying to get their houses improved because there's roaches and rats infested. They traveled from Bedford Park, Fordham, and even as far as Crown Heights in Brooklyn. They might be from different communities, but they all have something in common. Their landlord is Chestnut Holdings. Their destination last week was Chestnut's North Riverdale headquarters, a building they decorated with plastic rats and roaches in active defiance to draw their landlord's attention to the deteriorating condition of their buildings. The command center, the 24-year-old real estate investors firm, is located across the hall from officials leased by the Riverdale Press in a placid four-story building on Riverdale Avenue. It manages some 6,000 apartments across 134 
residential buildings in the Bronx. So they own 6,000 apartments, you guys. That is, that's a pretty big institutional investor, in my opinion. The firm has a spotty track record complying with New York's housing standards. According to public documents and court records, they agreed to pay $300,000 last year to settle a lawsuit with the state attorney general's office. After an investigation concluded, Chestnut Holdings falsely certified apartments are safe from lead. From lead, you guys, it's 2022. They're, st they're still dealing with like, like negligence like this. This is insane to me, but let's continue. Lead paint in new houses and fail to inspect for lead in units where young children live. This goes on. When a group of about two dozen tenants and organizers from the Northwest Bronx community and clergy arrived at the doorstep October 6th with a list of urgent repairs, the building's custodian staff told them Chestnut's office were closed. So this very successful institutional investor is turning their back on their tenants and probably hiding behind their lease agreements, which is a legal binding contract. This is crazy, you guys. So again, to recap, this very big company has a whole bunch of tenants protesting about the condition of the properties. And yet this institutional investor has done nothing about it. So ask yourself why? Why has the institutional investor done nothing about it? It could be a couple things, but the number one reason is, is they don't care really about the tenants. They care about what? Cash flow. So if they care about cash flow and the property is not cash flowing, that means that they're probably not going to upkeep the property. But also another reason why they may be suffering greatly as a result of the Federal Reserve quantitative tightening. Because remember, you guys, apartment leasing is the lowest and weakest it's been in 30 years. A lot of people don't realize that commercial multifamily right now is suffering. And that's shocking because most people think that rent will go up during a recession and not down. So if rent goes down during a recession, whoo, these landlords and recent investors that are poorly leveraged guys are going to be completely doomed. And again, going back to CNBC, a couple of the bullet points, renters across the U.S. are feeling the sting of soaring inflation, rising housing costs, and the end of the national eviction ban. So people are getting fed up. People can't afford these massive increases of rent. Some 15% of American households, around 6 million families are behind on rent. You guys, again, People can't afford these prices. People can't afford it. So people are going to stop paying it. And again, I hear rent's never going to go down. Rent's never going to go down. But you guys, and that may be true for some metro areas, but there are already some metro areas that are decreasing in rent. Take a look. So this is according to Zillow, you guys, and it's misting Austin and Phoenix. Austin and Phoenix are also down in rent. But this is the top five according to Zillow. Number one, Milwaukee at 14.3% down in rent. Minneapolis, 8.8%. Baltimore, 2.8%. Houston, what? 0.6%. Chicago, obviously Phoenix is on here. Obviously Austin is on here as well. So rent is going down. And if again, I'm trying to tell you guys, I'm okay with rent going down. I think rent should go down because it's way too high. The point I'm trying to make is, is rent so high right now? Tenants are protesting and tenants are protesting so much so it is going to absolutely wreck these landlords. Mark my words. And here's another chart from Redfin. This is asking rent. Okay. Now it looks like it's up year over year, but look at this guys. It's down 9% from peak rent is down. Listen, this is a nationwide average is down 9% from peak. So we have so much data now that is spelling out that some of these investors and landlords you better beware because your cap rates are about to be destroyed. And it's possible that many of them will have to fire sell those properties to liquidate to stay alive. That's going to happen. That's what's new in 2022 versus 2008. Now take a look at this paragraph here. We just witnessed the weakest third quarter for apartment leasing in the 30 years of tracking the U.S. apartment market. The worst quarter in 30 years. Net absorbent registered moderately negative, occupancy ticked down, and rents flattened. Is the slowdown due to renters hitting an affordability ceiling? 
For most of us, our gut reaction to the question is probably yes. If affordability is the major reason, we should see three key signals. Number one, weakening rent collections. Two, flight to affordability, a shift in demand towards cheaper submarkets and the more available class C asset class. Number three, stagnating renter incomes. And just to remind you guys, here is the nationwide average investor share of home in Q2. So they purchased 19% of homes in Q2. It was 20% in Q1 of 2022. So what I'm saying, guys, is the 20% of investor share in Q1 and 19% investor share in Q2. These investors, are doomed. Now, the well-positioned ones that are paying mostly cash and understand everything they're doing and understand what's coming may be safe, but a predominant amount of investors, remember, are mom and pop shops and a lot of them don't know what they're doing. And it's those people that are going to get crippled, especially if some of those people were flippers. If you were a flipper in this market, <laughs> you're done. I mean, you're, you're going to suffer. There's going to be a wave of bankruptcy. There's going to wave of evictions, foreclosures, prices will continue to plummet. And here's the thing, you guys, I don't want you to get caught up in that. Like I was caught up in that in 2008. So understand and prepare for what's coming. Now, other than that, you guys, I really hope you got some value and perspective in today's video. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.